Hi guys, welcome back. So uh, let's get diving into this then. So let's have a, I've got to get this wastegate. Um, what I first, first off what I'm gonna do is just probably, I might take off this pipe and have a good feel around and see if I can feel anything. Um, and then if I can, I'll obviously worry about that. And if I can't, then I'll probably take the cowl in and the wipers and all that kind of stuff off. Give myself a bit more room. So yeah, I'm gonna rip this off now and see if I can see anything. Oh, so it's actually easier just to take it all off in one go, uh, rather than pissing around for the time it takes. Anyway, so this is off, um, and I don't know if you can see, we've got some vac pipes here. This is the pipe, obviously all heat shielded, goes to the wastegate. Uh, and yeah, kind of unfortunately, in one way, it is completely intact and connected. Down, I don't know. Let's go onto the port down in there. It's on the boost pipe. And again, onto the niffle there. So, yeah, it looks like we might have a wastegate issue, which is unfortunate. But what I'm going to do first, because obviously that is, uh, as you can see, right down the way. First, what I'm going to do is get a vacuum gauge and take this pipe off and see if I can hear it moving inside make sure it is all I can hear it moving freely um, make sure it's holding vacuum because I'm hoping it still could be the unions on the top well not so much the top because that's when I come to turn on the actual boost controller which isn't an active isn't active yet it's literally just down to this pipe here uh, for a wastegate pressure so yeah as long as that can hold pressure and the wastegate opens uh, I have to take a whisk off, but I'll bring that, I'll get the tool and then um, give that a test, see where we go. Right, so I've had the uh, Metivac gauge out testing and I'm not, I don't appear to be able to create or hold any kind of vacuum or pressure in the lines. So what I'm going to need to do, I think, to make it a better test because I know there will be some leakage um, from the wastegate. I'm just going to take it off uh, yeah. and we'll see how fun of a job that's going to be. But yeah, I'm going to whip that off so I can have a proper feel and test and see what's going on. So yeah, wish me luck. And there we have it. Off. So not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. Just needed to drop the down pipe down a little bit there. Obviously, we're, I mean, getting it back up on the on a jack. Um, yeah, so I took it off to give me access down that side. Obviously the cowling off, shot brace. Yeah, and uh, there it is, off. Turns out there was one exact position. The hardest part was getting it past the turbo and out. Um, took me a while to find that position, but yeah, there we go, all done. Um, so yeah, it looks good in terms of uh, leakage. There's no leakage there. Um, everything's connected and tight at the top. What I'll do is set up the compressor um, to regulate some pressure down this line and we'll just see what what it does, how it opens, how it reacts and see if that gives us any indication on what's going on. Um, hopefully that'll tell us. Yeah, well, it came out easy. We're <laughs> going back in, it's going to be a whole different ball game. With these clips, you have to nut and bolt from each side on the clamps. We'll worry about that when we get there. So yeah, let's get the compressor set up, get this tested and see what it does. Right, so I've got the uh, compressor set up, just allowing 10 PSI of pressure. Now, if um, you can see in there, I've got the piston. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pressurise there into uh, the vacuum pipe and give it a bit of pressure. And uh, what I can uh, what I can do is actually fill the air from straight out the top port, which is no good. So it looks like we've got a diaphragm problem inside there because that should be sealed. That will cause uh, the piston to lift up, but instead the air is getting past the diaphragm and coming out the top port. So that is uh, looks like what my problem is. So I'll get this stripped down now and um, see what's going inside it. See what's going on inside. 
There we go, wastegate apart. Cap is okay. Spring is okay. And then the diaphragm, I think we can see where the problem lies. So yeah, that's uh, not good. Looks like it's come away from the inside as well. It's not a case of just not being rooted properly or fitting properly around the outside seal. Looks like it's come away from the piston itself. So I'm not sure if there's anything I can do with that, which is, uh, yeah, I took a gamble on the cheap unit. Obviously it's not paid off whether or not I go for another cheap one or whether I just splash out on a proper one. Obviously price difference is about 300 quid. So uh, I'll have a think about that. I might see if I can take this apart further, see if there's anything I can do. But yeah, that's what, that's what the problem is. That's why it was working and then not working. Um, yeah. So leave it with me and I'll uh, think of a solution. Okay, so after uh, ripping it to pieces, taking it apart, seeing what I could do, um, what I've decided to take a gamble on is a genuine uh, diaphragm. So yeah, so uh, I'm going to see if this now fits onto uh, onto the piston here, and uh, if it seals, I'm hoping so. So yeah, let's get this fitted, and um, well. See if it does, and then see if it works. Well, good news and bad news. Good news is this fits in there nicely, clamps onto the piston, uh, fits in the groove, and the lid also fits on. So that's all good. The bad news is the thickness of this diaphragm is uh, a lot thinner than this one. The old one so when I tighten up the bolts they bottom out and don't clamp the lid on the top so uh, we're almost there um, I did put a clamp I've got just a little clamp there and I clamped it shut to make sure that it's sealed um, and just run a bit of air in there just to make sure that it does actually function and it does so that's good um, what I'm also going to do at the same time is I've only got the one spring in there um, and providing the spring was operating correctly when it was working I was only getting six psi so what I'm probably going to do is I can see if I can find another little spring to put it in there and I'm just going to up the base um, boost pressure basically probably start somewhere around I'm aiming for about 12 maybe 12 psi that'd be nice that'd be the nice target and then i can grow from there um pushing it from six upwards with the boost controller might be asking a bit much when it gets into the higher boost ranges so i'll do that at the same time but anyway first i need to solve the problem of this clamping on um so yeah i can't drill out the holes any deeper not without damaging the threads anyway so that's no good um I've got two options really. I can trim down the ends of the bolts. That would be probably what I'm going to go with. But I can trim them down a little bit. Or if I can find some really tiny washers. And then I can sit them on and that will also space it. So one or the other. And that will be the, the way I fix it. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to get it together now. And then uh, put another spring in and see what ratio I get. Or what spring pressure it opens at. Right, okay, so I've uh, Loctited the little grub screws to hold that on. I've got some uh, washers and just trimmed them down. I don't know if we have to get the light on it. And then just hammered them in just to spacers. Uh, you can see where I've cut it. And that just spaces it out so the bolts don't go in so far. Uh, I've managed to find the wastegate spring. And yeah, only had it in my hand maybe five years ago. You knew it would be so difficult to find. Anyway, so whenever spring I can fit inside it. I did find these as well, but they're obviously way too big. They're from my uh, old um, tile that I had. So yeah, I'm going to put both of these in. Clamp this lid down. And see what kind of pressure I'm looking at. Um, so yeah, let me do that now. Okay then. Time to place your bets. So that is all now in and fitted. Um, I have run it on the. I just got a little regulator over on the airline. Now on the single spring, 
which is supposed to be a 7 PSI spring. Uh, it was saying it was 10 PSI before it cracked open. With the second spring in there, which also is supposed to be a 7 PSI spring, meaning 14 PSI, crack pressure. According to the gauge, it cracks at 20 PSI. So it has doubled what it said it would do. Um, what well, do we think is going to be right? Do we think the springs are 7 PSI? I mean, who knows? It's only a cheap uh, wastegate at the end of the day. Would you reckon the regulator is not quite right? Or the way I've set it up, at least, isn't right? So place your bets. When this gets fitted and put on, what boost do you think I'm going to get baseline? It's going to be interesting to find out. Right, let's see if I can get this fitted back on the car. There we go, back together. That was a ball leak. But anyway, it's done. I need to road test it now. So yeah, make your guesses. What boost am I going to make? I hope it's... Uh, I'm aiming for 12. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. One thing I do need to uh, figure out is this uh, clicking the fingers and everything getting done by magic. I've uh, not quite mastered it yet. I wish I had it for this job because it was absolute nightmare. Getting the clamps back on at the back, which the nut and bolt through, just, yeah, just tight. But yeah, every time, look, nothing happens. Or it keeps going wrong. <laughs>